Hi everyone, in this lab, you're going to experience how to get an arbitrary read-write primitive into the kernel. You're going to experience how we effectively win the race condition without the assistance of the debugger. And it's going to feel good. You're going to have to implement two things once you win the race condition. The first one is actually using the write zero primitive to overwrite previous mode for your own recovery thread. And then once you've done that, your recovery thread will return to userland and you'll be able to confirm you have an arbitrary read-write primitive into the kernel. And this is going to feel good. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is actually extracting an archive named parts3.zip and we provide it. And you need to extract it into the Visual Studio Labs folder you need to make sure you extract it in the right folder. So the parts three folder actually replaces the previous parts three folder, which should be empty before you actually replace it with the new version. And you need to make sure you keep the old same hierarchy. And then you can run the build.bat hello command again, in order to regenerate the Visual Studio project. And you will be able to access that new arbitrary read-write lab in Visual Studio. We provide code so you can effectively win the race condition without relying on WinBag. And it, it consists in using the congestion thread, suspense thread, and recovery thread, as explained in the previous section about how we can win the race condition without uh, WinBag assistance. But basically, the suspense thread will actually just be the main thread in the actual exploit implementation. The congestion thread will be requesting the resource manager basic information to congest the resource manager's mutex. And this is indeed new code related to winning the race condition without WinBag. The recovery thread will be responsible for calling the vulnerable function. And this thread will be stuck into the kernel similarly to before when we were using WinBag to win the race. There is also the named pipes thread responsible to initialize the named pipes, again, similarly to before when we were using WinBag to win the race. And then the main thread logic is very similar to before as well. It's going to create all the threads and it's going to create the chain of fake enlistments. Um, we have the spray enlistment replacing the kernel key enlistment using the name pipe spray. We have the leak enlistment, allowing us to leak the key resource manager and key thread pointers. And we have the trap enlistment, allowing us to block the recovery thread into an infinity loop. So we'll explain in the next slide how the code implementation effectively wins the race condition. But once we actually win that race condition, we provide code to leak both the key resource manager and key thread pointers, similarly to before when we were using WinBag to win the race condition. Okay, so moving to some other new code we provide. The main thread starts by creating all the KTM objects in the right state before calling the vulnerable function. And this is similar to what we did before when using WinBag to win the race. But this time, because we actually want to effectively win the race without using WinBag, what we do is we try to suspend the recovery thread at the same time as the congestion thread is congesting the resource manager's mutex. And so to try to suspend the recovery thread, we call the suspend thread function and specify the thread last system call argument in order to request the last syscall, which we know will only succeed if the recovery thread is actually suspended. And so when the recovery thread is suspended, we hope it's been suspended at the right spot due to the fact that we congested the resource manager's mutex. And so we're going to do a couple of things from that moment. And so we assume it's in the right spot and we do everything we need to actually free the latest touched enlistment by first counting how many enlistments have been touched by the kernel and then using the commit complete and close handle functions on the latest touched enlistment to free that enlistment. Then we spray fake data into the name pipes in order to replace the just freed k enlistment chunk. 
And finally, we can restore execution of the recovery thread. And here, basically, there are two possible scenarios. Either when we actually suspended the recovery thread, it was at the right spot to win the race condition. And so once we resume the execution of the recovery thread, it is going to process our fake canismant and it is going to unset its notifiable flag. And so we will be able to detect it from userland. The other scenario is we didn't suspend the recovery thread at the right spot. And so the recovery thread will just process another canismant after we resume that thread. And what we spread in the name pipe won't be used at all by the recovery thread after we resume it because we didn't trigger any use after free because we didn't win the race. And so in this case, we just rinse and repeat. We basically have to suspend the recovery thread again and try to win the race condition again. In terms of files in the Visual Studio project, we have the same files as before. And we have two new files named exploit.c and godmode.c. And the exploit.c file has all the helpers to effectively win the race condition, like the congest some thread and the suspend thread logic. The godmode.c has the logic to craft fake structures in New Zealand to trigger the write zero primitive and override previous mode. And we named this file god mode because we find this previous mode override really powerful. So the goal of the arbitrary read write lab is to inject a new enlistment to give us this arbitrary read write primitive into the kernel. So remember, we are in this scenario where we have this fake linked list of enlistments in New Zealand that end with a trap enlistment. And so the recovery thread is stuck in the kernel forever until we actually wake it up. And at any point, we can inject any enlistment to unblock that thread and make it process our new fake userland enlistment. And so the idea is going to be about injecting a new enlistment that allows us to set our recovery threads, case thread, previous mode field to zero in order to get into this code mode. And once we've done that, we're going to call the NT read virtual memory function from userland and confirm we can read any kernel address and similarly also write any kernel address by calling nt write virtual memory. And so there are two functions that we are going to need to modify, which is init god mode something and something arbitrary read write. And so the init god mode one is to actually initialize the write structures and offsets in order to reach the write zero primitive deep in the function calls and make sure the address and offsets we provide makes the code actually set zero to our recovery thread, case thread previous mode field. And the arbitrary read write one is to actually read and write data from the kernel to confirm we successfully overwrote previous mode with zero. And our recovery thread is now considered a kernel thread. And we can only do that after the recovery thread has returned from the kernel, as otherwise we can't call our NT read virtual memory and NT write virtual memory function from that recovery thread, since it would be stuck into the kernel and we have no way to interact with that thread from userland. And so we have small wrappers around these two functions called god read val and god write val. And so you can use the post vars structure for some structure offsets uh, for that particular Windows 10 1809 version and also the case thread address and K resource manager address we leak are actually stored into this case thread editor and K resource manager editor uh, fields into the uh, exploit vars uh, type structure. So we can see that initially we actually have labs up to escaping the loop, but we don't have labs to do the, the actual 
uh, arbitrary read write. So we'll go into uh, tools labs and we see the extracted files uh, in the labs folder. We see we have part two that has some folders, but part three doesn't have anything. So the idea is we are going to extract part three and replace that empty folder basically. So we're going to go into part three that zip and we can see that it does have a part three folder already and it has content inside it. So we're going to copy that file into labs here. Uh, we're going to extract it here. It's going to tell us that it's going to replace existing files, which is expected. I will say yes. So now what we can do, we can delete part three, that zip. And now we should be able to regenerate the Visual Studio project. And so we can see the build.bat script that we need to execute. So we need to open a CMD into that specific folder. And so once you've done it, uh, basically uh, you can see we have the build.bat. So we can say build.bat and then hello. So it's just going to rebuild the whole solution. And it's going to take into account the new part three folder. So now if we click on Visual Studio, it tells us that the Visual Studio solution has been modified from the outside, which is exactly what we wanted. So we can do a reload. And now you can see the part three labs being added to the solution. So if we look at the arbitrary read write lab, we can see that uh, it imports uh, many source files now. Uh, we can see that he said the arbitrary read write dot C, which is the entry point. Uh, so very specific for that particular lab. And then we have the regular enlistment to list all the enlistment, the fake enlistment in New Zealand, exploit.c to actually uh, start exploiting the bug, uh, fake shui um, to actually uh, deal with the uh, nine pipes, uh, god mode, which is a new file to actually um, build this uh, god mode primitive with the previous mode, ktm.c to build all the ktm objects, and trigger.c to actually trigger the, the bug. So if you look at the entry points, uh, the main function in arbitrary readwrite.c, we see the, the usual uh, function calls to initialize the uh, global uh, structure, uh, which is named exploit vars type, then counting the number of calls, and then it's calling this main functions uh, that does all the uh, race, uh, trying to win the race condition and getting the arbitrary read right. So let's look at this main function trying to win the race and get the arbitrary read right. So we skip the local variables because we're going to talk about them anyway later. Uh, so we can see we actually initialize a couple of threads here. So we have a congestion thread, we have a recovery thread, a pipe service thread, and a main thread. So let's analyze the main thread. So we can see that uh, we actually pass uh, a CPU core ID 0 and a thread priority highest. And so basically we're going to set the priority uh, and class of that particular thread. So the thing to remember is that the class takes uh, precedence over the thread priority. So here, a high priority class makes it uh, very likely to uh, be uh, executed. And then inside that class, it's also the highest uh, thread priority. So it's going to be prioritized. But the main thing to uh, understand here is that we, we arbitrarily assign it to core 0, uh, like the main thread, so the other threads can be assigned to other calls. That's the main thing. And so the main thread is going to basically be all the code that is not in another thread. Now let's look at the congestion thread. Uh, so we see that we're passing the global uh, structure uh, for the variables for the exploits. We're passing the congest specific arguments for the thread. 
like a pointer. So it's going to actually initialize that pointer. And then we pass CPU core ID one and thread priority highest. So we want the congestion thread to be assigned to a CPU core that is different from the main thread, which in, in this case will be the congestion thread will be assigned to a CPU core one uh, because the main thread is assigned to CPU core zero. And, and we want this congestion thread to be with the highest priority because the whole point of the congestion is to try to be executed as much as possible. So the other thread has less priority. And so the congestion thread does its job uh, effectively. Um, but basically this function just initialize the argument. Uh, so the P congest uh, argument being passed to the thread. We see it, it, it creates a thread. And then once the thread is created, it's gonna actually just uh, change its priority to be uh, the highest priority. Um, one thing worth noting is that uh, the congestion thread, because it's gonna actually try to request the description field of the resource manager. So the name, the actual name of the resource manager we pass a quite long name here just to increase the likelihood of this to take a long time after it, it actually um, locks the, the resource manager mutex. It's going to actually read the, the, the name, even though it's not valid name, at least it's increasing the, the, the amount of time. The uh, resource manager handle is the one where we're going to request the description field. So for now, we, we set it to invalid value, but it's going it's going to be set uh, later once we have initialized that uh, resource manager. And then, yeah, and then we call the congestion thread function. So let's look at this congestion thread function, which is the entry point for the congestion thread. Uh, let's have a quick look at the comments because it's quite interesting to see what is happening in the kernel. So in New Zealand, we're going to call the NT core information resource manager syscall. And uh, the idea is we want to congest the resource manager mutex. And we can see the, this is code from the kernel for handling the actual syscall. We can see it's going to retrieve the resource manager object based on the handle we provide from userland. And then it's going to call the ke wait for single object. And this is what we are targeting. We want to uh, congest uh, the resource manager mutex because we're going to keep asking locking for this mutex. And after that, the actual copy for the, the description field is supposed to happen to copy it back to userland. So going back to the congestion thread function, um, we do allocate some memory over two pages. Uh, I'm not sure this is actually useful for the exploit, but the idea is we try to have the name adjacent uh, at the end of one page overlapping with the other, with the second page. But it seems it's not actually useful for, for this bug. But basically, we allocate this resource manager basic information structure, which we need to pass to this NT query information resource manager function to request the description field. And yeah, and we, we call it in a while loop. So we see two ways to enable it. We need first to actually signal this start event. So until we actually um, signal this start event, nothing is going to happen. And then we have a B congest flag that's going to basically allow us to disable the congestion after uh, at some point. So it's going to, at first we're going to signal the start event and the congest uh, flag. And then once, once we want to stop it, we're going to basically set B congest to false and it's going to go back here and it's going to wait for another start event to do other things if we want to re-enable the congest thread. So let's go back to um, the main function. So let's analyze the recovery thread, how it is being initialized. Uh, so we can see uh, we're passing the actual function uh, that's going to be the entry point for the recovery thread, which we'll analyze in a second. But basically, uh, because the recovery thread is actually passed a pointer to the race one, so it can detect if the, the race was uh, one. But most importantly for now, it's we can see it's going to be uh, pinned to the same core as the, as the congestion thread, so core one, uh, but with a, a lower uh, priority. And so the, the idea is that Basically, the congestion thread and the recovery thread are going to be competing in terms of priority. But because the congestion thread has a higher priority, uh, it's going to not only increase the likelihood of the congestion thread to be scheduled, but also it's going to, as a side effect, it's going to reduce the likelihood of the recovery thread to be scheduled. So that's uh, that's kind of the, the idea. And so let's first look at the initialization function. 
So the main thing here is that we initialize the argument for the recovery thread. We actually call the create thread function on the uh, function that we'll analyze in a second. And then we set the priority to uh, the, the lowest priority. That's the, the main thing uh, from this function. So now let's analyze the actual entry point for the uh, recovery thread. And so really what it, this function does is it's going to actually uh, call a recover thread function, uh, which is basically the one that's going to call the uh, vulnerable function. So we can have a look at this. And we can see all it does is it, it calls the recover resource manager function. And uh, so it's got it's get blocked into a uh, kernel mode so we can trigger the vulnerability and, and win the race condition and so on. And around this, uh, we can see that um, there is a basically a call for wait for single object. So we can basically trigger that it's actually going to trigger this call. So it's going to block on this start event until we actually signal this event. And once it uh, returns to user land after it exits kernel, kernel mode, uh, and this recover resource manager function returns, uh, it's going to actually set the done event uh, signal. So we know the recovery thread return to userland. So if we go back to this function, so the, the actual handler for the recovery thread, so after it has returned to userland, here, what we can do is we have a couple of code uh, we need to add. We see that basically the idea is we're going to be able to test if we uh, got um, elevated privileges, uh, like if our arbitrary read-write primitive works. Uh, because assuming previous mode was correctly overwritten with the value zero, we should be able to uh, just call uh, functions to, to actually read and write the kernel memory. So that's going to be something you'll have to do. And then once we have tested that, uh, we're just going to say, okay, assuming we reach that state, that particular line, it means we managed to um, get arbitrary read write. Otherwise, we would have returned um, beforehand. So let's go back to the actual uh, original function. And then I won't uh, detail them uh, in here because we talked about them already. And it's, it's again, reusing the same code we, we used in previous labs. But basically, this is just creating the um, name pipe thread uh, server uh, to basically allocate uh, lots of chunks uh, using name pipes. And then we're uh, actually connecting to the name pipe as a client. And then we have creation of our fake enlistments uh, and the chain of enlistments. So remember, there is this spray enlistment, which is basically the enlistment um, using the name pipes, which is why we calculate the, the size that we need to spray in the name pipe. And then there is the leak enlistment that allows us to leak the k thread pointer as well as, the, as well as the k resource manager pointer. And finally, the trap enlistment that allows us to um, block the recovery thread uh, forever. Then we can see that we actually initialize a transaction manager, a resource manager, uh, we recover the resource manager, and then we call create transaction. So this is basically uh, not related to triggering the bug at all. The idea is that um, assuming we try to win the race condition and we go over all our enlistments and we don't manage to actually win the race condition for the first set of enlistments, we're going to have to recreate a full environment and reallocate new uh, target a transaction with new enlistments, and we're going to have to do the Feng Shui again. And so basically this, um, this setup is done. So we have a single transaction that we can use to fill K enlistment size holes, which is why it's called hole filler. Uh, we just create a single transaction so we can allocate um, chunks of the size K enlistment later. Then we have the name pipe Feng Shui. And so basically we create holes of the size of uh, k enlistments using the name pipe. So when we allocate um, actual target enlistments, they're going to be uh, adjacent to name pipes that we control. And so when a k enlistment is freed uh, and we try to trigger use after free, there, there won't be any coalescing. 
So now let's have a look at the main loop where we are trying to win the race condition. And the idea is we're going to have to set up the uh, environment to trigger the vulnerability. And if we don't manage to win the race, we're going to have to set it up again. So that's why it's inside the, the, the while loop. So we can see we set up the transaction manager, resource manager, all the KTM objects. We actually save them into the structures uh, so they can be known by anything. Then we uh, set up this initial transaction just so we have the environment so we can actually trigger the vulnerable function and then we set up this other transaction which is the one where we're going to actually trigger the vulnerability where basically all the the enlistments um so we're going to have uh 5000 hex enlistments we drain all the notifications so we start with something fresh and from there, uh, we basically uh, start the congestion thread. So remember, we we have the boolean set to true, uh, and then we have the start event to actually start um, congesting. The idea is we congest the resource manager uh, before uh, starting the uh, recovery thread, just so we maximize it. Then we set lots of um, handles and, and variables uh, in the global structure. And then we see we call this race recovering resource manager function. So this is the one where we're going to detail in a second where we basically trigger the, we try to win the race. Uh, so there is a lot going on in this function. But for now, let's assume um, this is a black box and we try to win the race. And if this function returns true, it means we won the race condition. If it returns false, it means um, we ran out of enlistments. So we need to set up again everything. So if we won the race, um, we're going to break and exit this loop. Um, if we didn't win the race, um, we basically um, say to drain the name pipes. We stop the congestion thread and we're going to close the handles because obviously we're going to have to reconfigure all the environment again and try again. OK. Um, if we did win the race condition, uh, we're going to set this flag to true and then we're going to break break out of the loop. And what we do in this case, we are going to um, clean up everything related to the Feng Shui because we don't need any Feng Shui anymore because we won the race. Uh, here you can ignore that for now, but basically if we win the race, so we got, we got out, out of the loop, we go into this if condition and what's going to happen is the main logic is we can uh, resume the thread so the idea is because when we try to win the race condition, we're going to try to suspend the recovery thread, which we'll see in a second. We have to resume the thread um, in order to uh, avoid that it's actually suspended. Because remember, the if we win the race condition, the recovery thread will be looping forever on our fake user land enlistments. So it's never going to, be going to be actually suspended. So we just call resume thread. So it's never going to be suspended. And then we call this a uh, sub function, which is basically going to try to inject what we call the God mode enlistment, which is the one that's going to give us uh, a way to override previous mode with zero. So we'll, we'll look at this in, in a second. And then we wait for the recovery thread to uh, tell us, OK, we, we actually uh, got God mode uh, because um, it went out of the vulnerable function. Um, and then uh, we can just clean up everything and return cleanly. So I guess here we have two things we want to do. We want to look at the race recovering resource manager function that's going to try to win the race condition. And then we want to look at this, uh, this injection of a god mode enlistment and exiting the loop. So for now, let's look at the uh, race condition function. So now let's look at the function uh, tr that tries to win the race condition with a fresh uh, KTM object. Uh, so remember for now, the recover thread is not in the vulnerable function yet because it's, we haven't signaled the, the event. But basically the idea is we want the, so let's have a look at the at this comment. We want the recovery thread uh, to actually call this TMP set notification resource manager function that's going to basically send notification uh, that we can read from userland. Then we want it to pass this check 
uh, that it's going to fail to detect that the enlistment is finalized because at that stage it's not finalized yet. And then we want basically to, to congest the resource manager mutex with the congestion thread. We want to actually suspend the recovery thread around that core, ideally. And that's, that's our objective. Uh, so once we are in this function, we basically um, signal the start event. So the recovery thread will uh, actually call the vulnerable function, the kernel. And what we do here, we, we actually start counting notification. And the idea is we want to detect um, when the recovery thread uh, reaches the, the kernel. And so that's why we use the block version. We want to at least read one. Uh, so once we've done that, we go into this loop, so we see there is an index for the enlistment, and we make sure uh, we don't go over the 5,000 hex uh, maximum entries. If we, here we're gonna loop over all the, the enlistments. And so for now, if we just fold this while loop, we see that if we actually exit that loop, it means we return false, indicating we didn't win the race condition. So there, there, there will be a return true if um, we actually won the race in, into that while loop. So now let's have a look at this uh, while loop uh, when we try to read the notification for all the enlistment that are being touched by the kernel in, by the recovery thread. So the first thing we do is we call the suspend thread function on the recovery thread. So we try to suspend the recovery thread. And this function is asynchronous, so it's not going to suspend the thread right away. It's going to do it when the kernel thinks um, it makes sense to do it. And so here, after we call this function, we're going to have to check if the thread is suspended. And so this is going to be done by this function. And the idea is that because we're trying to win the race condition, if the if we win the race condition, um, what's going to happen is that the recovery thread is going to be looping on our fake userland enlistment, and it's going to be looping on our trap enlistment forever. So the recovery thread will never be suspended because it's going to be spinning on our fake enlistment. And so if we actually won the race condition at the previous iteration, when we try to suspend the thread, it's never going to be suspended. So that's why we do both checks. And so this function will return false if we manage to suspend the thread, or it's going to return true if we detected we won the race condition, uh, in which case it's just going to return from this function because we won the race, so there is nothing else to do. But let's assume for now that we We'll look at this function in a second, but let's assume for now we manage to suspend the thread. So what we want to do is we want um, to uh, we assume we hope that we manage to suspend the thread on the right spot so we can actually win the race condition. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to free the enlistment and we're going to try to replace it with our fake enlistments and then resume the thread so we can see if we actually won the race condition. So the way we do that is we count the notifications. Here there is a special case where if there is none, no, no, no new notification, uh, it's probably we don't have anything to do. Uh, so we're just going to loop, uh, but it's commented for now. And then we disable the congestion thread because it doesn't need to congest anything anymore at the moment. We just print how many new notifications we received and how many we've received so far. And then we set an event to actually drain the allocations related to the name pipe. So the reason we do that is because we have a limited amount of data we can write into a name pipe before it's actually read from the other side. So we effectively have to drain the allocations uh, at each iteration. And because it creates holes and we don't really want these, uh, what we do is we just use the hole filler KTM environment to just refill the holes with the um, uh, uh, enlistment uh, as well. So then we get the index of the current enlistment that is being touched. And so now what we do is we basically free this specific enlistment, the latest one that has been touched by calling commit complete and closing the handle. And so now the enlistment is freed. So what we do is we spray name pipes and by spraying the name pipes, um, one of them will replace the freed enlistment that has just been freed just before. And uh, then basically we hope that we were actually trying to raise the recovery thread at the right spot and that we actually won the race condition and that we managed to replace our free enlistment with data we control. And so when we're going to resume this thread, 
we hope it's gonna work with our fake enlistments. But if we didn't win the race, um, we may as well just restart the congestion thread right away, which is what we do here. Just restart the congestion thread um, and then we resume the thread. Uh, we re resume the recovery thread and we, we hope that it's going to use our replaced enlistments. And so if we go back to the beginning of the loop here, uh, basically, again, if we haven't won the race condition, we uh, basically suspend the thread and then check it's suspended. So we can actually try to win the race again. But if we actually won the race condition, we still try to suspend the thread because we don't know at that stage if we actually managed to win the race at the previous iteration. And then we try to detect it. So I think now it's time to actually look at this function in both cases where we haven't won the race in the previous iteration or if we have won the race already. So this function, basically what it's going to do is it's going to actually call the NT query information thread function in order to query the last syscall executed uh, by the recovery thread. So remember, if this function returns zero, it means the recovery thread has been suspended. So that's what we test here. If we ret if it returns zero, it means it, it got suspended. So not only does it mean that it got suspended, but also it means we haven't won the race yet because otherwise it wouldn't be suspended. And so if it got suspended, we exit that while loop and we just gonna return false, which indicates we the thread got suspended. And and if not, uh, basically we're gonna we're gonna test uh, if we won the race. So the way we test if we won the race is by checking our uh, enlistment to make sure it has been touched. And so that's what we do here. We go over this function and so we actually test two things uh, in this function. We test the object header uh, pointer count because if the um, ob reference object is called our on our enlistment, it's going to actually increase the pointer count. So if it's if it has changed, it means the the fake enlistment has been touched. But this is not safe enough because it's going to actually dereference pointer count as well in in the variable function. So this is not good enough. The, the safest check is to actually check that the notifiable flag has been unset. So if that's the case, this function will return, okay, we, we detected we won the race because our fake enlistment has been modified. So let's go back to um, this uh, function. So remember this function, but trying to detect uh, if either the recovery thread has been suspended or if we won the race, is doing this while loop. It's testing uh, the last syscall we said it detected if, if, if it was suspended. If it wasn't suspended, it's going to check if we actually won the race. And then if not, then we're going to loop again, basically. And we're going to loop and we're going to return if either we got suspended or we won the race condition. And yeah, and that's pretty much all here. So again, if this function returned false, it means we managed to suspend the thread. So we're going to do the, all the checks and we're going to try to win the race by freeing the enlistment. And, and if not, um, if, if this function returns true, it means in a previous iteration, we managed to win the race. And now the thread is not suspended, but we detected we won the race. So we're going to return true. And so basically, um, this function race recovering resource manager is going to return. As a return. So now we're back into our uh, main function doing the race and trying to get the arbitrary read write. So remember, we we are back in this loop where we created this KTM environment and we uh, we know here we managed to possibly win the race. So if we didn't win the race, we're going to recreate the KTM, KTM environment with new k enlistments so we can actually try again. But let's assume we won the race. So we're going to get out of this loop and we're going to 
assume we won the race condition. So remember, we actually tried to suspend the thread, but it never suspended because the recovery thread uh, got into that infinity loop uh, because it was working on our trap enlistment. So now what we do is we resume the thread just to avoid the suspend thread to uh, actually suspend the recovery thread because there is no reason to suspend the thread anymore. And now we're going to go into looking at what can we do now that our recovery thread is stuck on our trap enlistment. And so we can see that uh, enable god mode 64 via null write is actually taking a uh, function pointer as an argument. So this second function will actually be called by the first one. So let's look at the first one for now. Uh, so basically this function is about initializing the enlistment uh, to get god mode. But basically what it's going to do is going to basically call leak resource manager and recovery thread addresses first. Because at that stage, uh, we have already got the leak enlistment passed by the kernel. So basically, you can just read the leaked k thread and leaked k resource manager from the fake username enlistments. And once we have read them, we know they are the k thread address is um, known for us and the uh, k resource manager address is known. So we can build both the escape enlistment, which is the one that will be uh, added to the chain uh, at the very end, once after we got god mode, because we, we, won't, we won't be able to do anything once we have escaped the loop, the vulnerable loop uh, in the recovery thread. But basically here we're calling the function being passed and we are calling this function to build this god mode enlistment. So this function is going to reach on the god mode enlistment. The god mode enlistment is the enlistment that contains all the structures uh, that uh, will allow us to get this uh, write zero primitive in order to overwrite our previous mode field for, for the uh, recovery thread, which is why we pass the case thread address because we're going to have to override the previous mode for, for that particular case thread. And we pass the escape enlistment because we're going to have to chain the escape enlistment after the code mode enlistment. And so once we have um, built both the code mode enlistments linked to the escape enlistment, we can basically call the inject enlistment function to inject the code mode followed by the escape enlistment uh, inside this chain uh, because the recovery thread was trapped in, and looping over this trap enlistment. Um, so yeah, um, all we need now is to understand how to build that good mode enlistment, right? Which is done by the function be being called. So let's go back. And we're going to analyze this function that actually creates the good mode enlistment. So this function is kind of similar to the function we use to actually build the leak enlistment when we actually tried to leak the K resource manager as well as the K thread addresses in that we're building fake structures in the, in the username that are going to be parsed by the kernel. And so yeah, in this case, we, we have to allocate only a one page binary. And it's because the primitive we, we get for the, the right zero primitive we get is actually at dispatch level. So we, we can't actually have uh, a page fault. Uh, so we, we make sure we are on one single page. Uh, and so we're going to allocate all our fake structures. Um, so we have our fake enlistments. And before the fake enlistment, we have the fake object header. Then the enlistment has a, a mutex of the type mutant. We know we need a K weight block eight structure. And this K weight block eight structure is going to have a waitlist entry uh, pointing to the uh, waitlist head. And the waitlist head is going to point back to the waitlist entry and the K uh, weight block eight uh, structure will have a thread, uh, a thread pointer, um, which is kind of related to the right zero primitive we have, right? So here we need some kind of adjusted address that when it's going to actually use that thread and use the thread lock, um, it's going to actually write zero to previous mode. So here we're going to have to basically 
compute that adjusted write address based on the case thread address. So when the log happens and the write zero happens, um, it's going to actually write zero to, to our case thread previous mode. And finally, this function is just going to initialize the flink pointer for the following enlistment. So in this case, it's going to be the escape enlistment. And we also need a, a transaction um, being set so the vulnerable code doesn't crash and is, is happy. OK, so now we can go back to this code. And yeah, that's pretty much all we need. So let's summarize what uh, we need to do. Well, actually, what you need to do. Basically, the main function is calling this um, exploit race for arbitrary read function, which is the main code for this lab. And this function is actually initializing all the threads, and one of them is the recovery thread. And, and th this function is the function that is going to be called after the recovery thread returns from the kernel back to userland. And so assuming we actually managed to change previous mode for this particular recovery thread, it means now we should be able to just read and write the kernel memory. So this function needs to be modified in order to um, confirm we can arbitrarily read and write the kernel memory. But before doing that, we're going to have a look at the function doing the actual race condition. And so this function, race recovering resource manager, is being called. It's going to try to win the race condition. And assuming we won the race condition, it's going to return. And after it has returned, we can see that if we won the race condition, then basically we need to inject that specific good mode enlistment in order to overwrite previous mode. So we're going to need to modify this init good mode enlistment for arbitrary read write. And this function, uh, we're going to have to basically uh, adjust the the address we pass for the thread pointer in order to override previous mode. So I would start with that if I were you. And once you have done that, um, you can go back to uh, this function. And this function will be called when uh, the recovery thread um, is started. And so basically, it's going to go here and call the recover resource manager function is going to be trapped into the kernel and at some point it's going to return and what, once it's returned here we basically need to test if we actually manage to get good mode and by reading and, and writing arbitrary kernel memory so yeah um, basically all the functions you need to modify are in arbitrary read write.c you can see this function which is the one for the recovery thread and then there is this function which is the one um, to actually override previous mode. And once you've done that, you're going to feel good. Now, it's your turn.